Good evening and welcome to Prime Time News, coming to you live and direct from the News First studios here in Colombo. I'm Bernadine Chai Singha. Let's now take a look at headlines. President Gota Bear congratulates Joe Biden, says Sri Lanka is committed to further strengthen and consolidate the multifaceted partnership with the United States. Emergency approval granted to use COVID-19 vaccine AstraZeneca in Sri Lanka. Acting Sri Lankan High Commissioner to India summoned and questioned over death of Indian fishermen in northern seas. National movement to protect the East Continent Terminal in jeopardy. Number factions raise concerns. India out of Virudda, Kodanagana Matawa, the Hadana, Madia, Itana, Etani, the Prehad Lakwena Pulwa, Esamanda Prakashani Kutkana Putkeo, Niramiko, Mahama Maradan Pulwa. India will learn it. Levi Lakna, Levi Lathan Lasti, Hebe Varai and Apilasti. While Sapugala protest continues, two farmers hospitalized in critical condition. President Gota Be Rajapaksa has said that the government's policy is to work with the United Nations and its agencies to achieve accountability and human resource development for achieving sustainable peace and reconciliation. The President made these remarks upon the appointment of a three-member commission to probe human rights violations. Sri Lanka withdrew from the co-sponsorship of the 30-stroke 1 resolution on reconciliation, accountability and promotion of human rights in Sri Lanka and two preceding resolutions that was passed in October of 2015. The government had announced its withdrawal during the 43rd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Commissions and committees that were appointed to investigate alleged violations of human rights and humanitarian laws have made recommendations to take the relevant action. Yesterday, President Gotabe Rajpaksa had appointed a three-member commission entrusted with the task of investigating the reports prepared by previous commissions and making recommendations on necessary actions that need to be taken. Supreme Court Judge A.H.M.D. Nawaz has been appointed as the chairman of the commission that will also comprise of retired Inspector General of Police Chandra Fernando and retired District Secretary Nimal Abesiri. President Gota Rajapaksa has written a letter to the new U.S. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris highlighting the long-standing relations and close friendship between the two nations. In his letter to the new President of the United States, Joe Biden, President Rajapaksa says that the people of Sri Lanka join hands with him to convey our warmest greetings to President Joe Biden and the people of America. In his letter, President Gota Be Rajpaksa writes, and I quote, Sri Lanka, under my leadership, based on the mandate received from my people, is committed to further strengthen and consolidate this multifaceted partnership with the United States, grounded in mutual respect, shared values and common interest, end quote. He added that, quote, Amid unprecedented challenges for humanity in the face of the pandemic, I am confident that your vision, long years of public service and astute statementship will stand in good stead for greater progress and prosperity for the United States and in ensuring peace, development and stability across the globe. End quote. In his letter to the newly elected Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris, the President said that being elected as the first woman Vice President in the United States is a historic achievement for the women in the U.S. as well as a great source of inspiration around the world in the quest for women empowerment. He said, quote, your Indian heritage gives all of us in South Asia special pride, end quote. India's external affairs minister had agreed to provide Sri Lanka with the Covishield vaccine manufactured by the Serum Institute during his recent visit to the country. Sri Lanka is yet to receive the vaccine that has already been exported by India to several neighboring nations. Meanwhile, the National Medicines Regulatory Authority today granted regulatory clearance for emergency use of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in Sri Lanka. India has exported COVID-19 vaccines to the Maldives, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh under its Vaccine Maitri initiative. 
Initially, India had declared that the process of delivering vaccines would be delayed as Sri Lanka had not granted regulatory clearance. The National Medicines Regulatory Authority today granted regulatory clearance for the vaccine upon an application submitted by India Serum Institute through the Indian High Commission in Colombo. The UK's medicines regulatory body known as the MHF had granted regulatory clearance for the emergency use of the vaccine. Taking that into consideration, we approved the vaccine to be used in Sri Lanka following a study carried out by a specialist committee. Since our regulatory body is stronger than the entities in Bhutan or Maldives, we required an additional period for this process. However, we have made a strong decision following a thorough study. We hope to commence the first phase of the vaccination program by mid-February. We will receive between 20 and 25 percent of the vaccines free of charge. We have made arrangements to purchase the remaining jabs. Meanwhile, the health ministry has said that it is gearing to conduct a vaccination trial tomorrow. We have organized trials at the office of the Medical Officer of Health in Piliandala, the Piliandala Hospital. Similar arrangements have been made in the Colombo North Teaching Hospital as well. During tomorrow's trials, we will identify problems that can arise in the process. The trials will also be useful in deciding the number of vaccines that can be distributed within a certain time frame. Meanwhile, Attorney General Dapula de Oliveira has sought further clarification from the Director General of Health Services concerning the purchase agreement of the COVID-19 vaccine from India. This was confirmed by State Council Nisharaja Ratna, who acts as the coordinating officer to the Attorney General. The Al Jazeera media outlet today reported that India is offering COVID-19 vaccines to draw praise from neighboring nations to push back China's dominating presence in the region. According to the media report, India has planned to distribute millions of COVID-19 vaccines among South Asian nations. The report added that India, for years, has struggled to match the pace of Chinese investment in countries such as Sri Lanka, Nepal and the Maldives, where China is building ports, roads and power stations as part of its Belt and Road Initiative. Al Jazeera has reported that the demand for vaccines in the South Asian countries that are desperate to revive their economy-dependent economies have offered Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government a way to claw back ground. The Indian High Commission announced a short while ago that the government of Sri Lanka has conveyed that emergency use approval for Covishield vaccines has been granted. The High Commission added that the government authorities in India and Sri Lanka are now working towards early delivery of these vaccines in Sri Lanka. A discourse has arisen on problems surrounding the fisheries industry amidst uncertainty over receiving COVID-19 vaccines from India. The latest concerns have arisen after four fishermen died following a mid-sea collision between an Indian boat and a vessel belonging to the Sri Lanka Navy. The incident had been reported on the 18th of this month with the Navy claiming that the Indian boat that had illegally entered Sri Lanka's waters had intentionally collided with the Navy vessel. However, the Indian External Affairs Minister had summoned Sri Lanka's Acting High Commissioner to New Delhi to strongly protest against the incident. According to the Hindu newspaper, an Indian external affairs minister had issued a statement insisting that issues pertaining to fishermen must be addressed in a humanitarian manner. The ministry had added that existing understandings between the two governments must be strictly observed and that utmost efforts should be made to ensure that such incidents do not reoccur. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka's fisheries minister Douglas Devananda had issued a statement stating that steps would be taken to inquire into this incident. He added that incidents of this nature can be prevented if a proposal submitted to the Indian Prime Minister on preventing fishermen from illegally entering Sri Lanka's waters is implemented. Will 49% of stake of the east container terminal of the Colombo port be given to India's Adani Group? Amongst the several factions who oppose this move are groups who supported the present government to come to power. If India is asking for a blood sacrifice for this port and our domestic resources, we are willing to give it. But we are not going to give away the East Container Terminal. This must stop. During the 2500 year history of this country, People like Don Juan Dharmapala and Mihindu V 
left a black mark in the history books of Sri Lanka. The Mahavamsa was written hundreds of years after the death of these kings, but it will not take that long for history to be written now. The Thera Kobayakadua went down in history as a monk who helped those who betrayed our country. So if the names of Abhetisa Thera, Kasapa Thera, Indasara Thera, Vimalajyoti Thera and all other Theras who are not here go down in history as those who helped bring to power a government that handed over the east container terminal of the Colombo port to India forever. What do we have to say about that? We are not ready to be a part of this version of history. So, Honorable President, please. The opposition from the public is massive. The Mahasangha is against this. Maybe there are a few businessmen who want to get commissions from this deal. But please, stop this. <laughs> A threat to our freedom, sovereignty under fire. The legendary rebellion that saw Sri Lankans sacrificing their lives as they fought against colonial domination. Then, as it is now, a group of local elite, greedy for perks and privileges, betrayed our nation and strengthened the hand of Governor Robert Brownrigg. These elitists enjoyed British protection and were given British education and today continue to remain entrenched in our politics despite 72 years of independence. Centuries ago, it was the Portuguese, the Dutch and the English. Today, it is America, China, and India. We have rulers and governments who are protecting the interests of other nations, but who will fight for the interests of Sri Lanka? Just as it was in 1818, will it be left to the people themselves to stand up for our sovereignty? The time has come to unite. If we divide ourselves, we will fall. Let's unite as one and protect our beautiful nation. Sri Lankans for Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, the Pavidi Handa organization convened at the Abhya Rama temple in Narahampita this evening. Before the Pavidi Handa organization brings forth the entire Mahasangha of the country, please retract the proposal to sell the East Container Terminal. I would like to request the Mahanayaka Theros to influence the government to protect these national resources. We oppose the sale of anything because the previous sales weren't that successful. The entire Mahasangha, including the Mahanayakateros, who worked hard to bring this government into power, would oppose this. We would like to request the government to listen to our voice and protect our national resources. Our Theros are giving their lives to stop this from happening. They will not do, they will do what they can. This is not a plead from the government. Remember that we will only protect a king or a family if they are for the country. Yesterday, an official from the Indian High Commission did not arrive to accept the letter of the trade unions. That shows their stubbornness. Moreover, we don't know the operation behind the COVID-19 vaccine. If India is such a close friend of Sri Lanka with close ties, why did they abandon us? These are troubling questions. Meanwhile, Minister Vimal Viravansa expressed these views regarding the East Container Terminal. The Minister in charge of ports should submit a cabinet paper to the cabinet on what will be done in the end with regard to the East Terminal. If we are not satisfied with that cabinet paper, we will definitely express our views on it inside and outside the cabinet. In Cabinet 
Meanwhile, cautions were raised on the risks associated with the nationwide campaign to protect the East Container Terminal. India has always adopted a policy against our country. They have always attempted to bring us under their trap. The assassination of some of our country's leaders is a negative repercussion of this attitude. Accusations were levelled against India over the murder of Premadasa. Reasonable suspicion has arisen over India's connection to the April 21st attacks as well. It was proven that an Indian was linked to the attacks in Kathankudi. The attempts made by India to strategically gain control over our port is a testament to these claims. India is interfering in this project in the worst possible way by undermining diplomatic relations and international conventions. On the other hand, they are appointing their stooges among trade unions that are opposing these moves, intending to create a force that would back the handing over the terminal. We strongly condemn these efforts. Against such a backdrop, media institutions that are raising these concerns against India may come under attack. The individuals who speak out against these activities can be murdered as well. Ultimately, we might not be able to identify the killers. As India is attempting to pursue this deal forcefully or by any other means, it has come to a point up to which they are ready to fulfill their objectives, even at the cost of claiming the lives of our leaders. <laughs> Several foreign intelligence agencies, including India's research and analysis wing, more commonly known as RAW, are involved in this matter. We have created a common force with 23 trade unions, several civil activist organizations and political parties. However, we are aware that one group that's a part of this force plans on betraying this endeavor. Those engaged in this struggle with pure intentions are under threat now as this matter is part of an ongoing rift between superpowers. All factions who are part of our struggle, including politicians, trade union representatives and media personnel, should be protected. And to strengthen their security, we must create a powerful force against the sale of national assets with the participation of labor movements and the general public. <laughs> How do we get out of this trap? If a country is strategically positioned in terms of its geographical location that would play an important role in international politics, I watched a program that aired on Sirasa that speaks of the Sea of Sri Lanka and our exclusive economic zone. Our perception is that Sri Lanka is limited to only its land mass, but our country is blessed with a resource much larger than that, and that is the ocean surrounding our island. Such valuable resources have not even been recognized. The East Container Terminal at the Colombo Port is the only terminal with a depth of more than 18 meters and is capable of accommodating large ships and vessels. This is the resource that the government plans on selling to a foreign nation. There will be no Sri Lankan Port Authority. There will be no large ship or vessel operations coming under the purview of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority after the East Container Terminal is given to them. This is the only remaining national resource that could be leveraged to develop our country. A proper government with a long-term vision would recognize this asset and develop it. If not, they could betray our country by selling it and destroying it. Former President Maitri Pala Sirisena has said that during his tenure as president, he made it clear that the East Container Terminal would not be released to anyone. <laughs> during my presidency, foreign nations came forward requesting to develop the East Container Terminal. However, I informed them that this terminal will not be given to anyone. Both India and Japan came forward for a joint project. However, I made it very clear to the leaders of both countries that the East Container Terminal would not be given to any foreign faction. Since both countries possessed the required wealth, I proposed that they develop the Western Terminal instead. I pledged in the presence of 3,000 port workers, the East Container Terminal will not be given to any foreign nation. This is our stance on this matter. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party maintains the same. <laughs> Meanwhile, the national movement for the protection of the East Container Terminal at the Colombo port submitted its proposals to the Cabinet Subcommittee today. The proposals were submitted by a large group of people, including religious leaders and representatives of 23 organizations affiliated to the national movement for the protection of the East Container Terminal.
We are expecting a written response with regard to this. Let us know what we can do to make sure that the East Container Terminal continues to belong to our country. We are ready to make that sacrifice as well. The repression has already begun. However, we swore that we will not give up on this. We would like to let everyone know that this fight will not end until we have won. What was the stance of Vyatmaga movement on the East Container Terminal while attempting to bring the present government into power? These were the views expressed by the Secretary to the Ministry of Water Supply and Drainage at a Vyatmaga event. <laughs> The East Container Terminal is a major asset to the port. Its construction had been completed in 2015. But until today, a single crane was not brought down to this site. If the cranes are brought down, the country can generate more than 100 billion US dollars. The terminal only costed 70 million dollars to be constructed. Operations at the terminal can begin if another 60 million is spent for this purpose. If 100 million was used, the entire terminal can be constructed. Instead of taking the relevant measures, they are attempting to sell off the entity by citing that the country cannot manage it. They are trying to sell these entities to foreign nations, while Sri Lanka has one of the world's oldest terminals. I remember attending a conference in India in 2013. I was asked as to why Indian companies are not being allowed to participate in 10 auctions called by Sri Lanka. I responded saying that how can we allow India to handle our ports when its ports are being managed by Dubai. Now we have been forced to sink to this position. After sending away all our entities to foreign nations while having experienced officials in our country, we will have to wait for the ships to arrive with nothing to do. These are times that we should pay very keen attention to what is happening around us, what is happening around us geopolitically. There are two things that I want to draw your attention to. One is the fact with regard to the COVID-19 vaccine that, it, that was promised to us by India. The first point is that the foreign minister of India was in our country. There was a request that was made by the Sri Lankan government for the COVID-19 vaccine to be taken, to be received from India. The India, Indian government said that they view helping the neighborhood as a duty and they promised the vaccine. However, as of now, we do not know clearly as to when this vaccine will happen, where other South Asian nations around us have received this vaccine from India. That is the first point. The second point is this issue that has arisen around the island of Kachatiwu, where several sailors are reportedly have died. And there was an issue where they, the Indian fishermen had come into the Sri Lankan side of the water and uh, engaged in fishing activities and there is an issue there. This second issue has now gone on to become a diplomatic issue where our acting High Commissioner uh, residing in India had been called, had been summoned by the Foreign Ministry for discussions as well. Now these two issues are against a backdrop where we do not even have a High Commissioner to represent our interests in India where there are so many issues happening surrounding India here in Sri Lanka. You saw news reports of what's happening in India. Now the question is, are all of this linked to the East Container Terminal? Is this a method to draw attention, to force any party in this agreement to come forward and talk to India about the East Container Terminal and do things their way? These are genuine questions that we can ask depending and looking at what is happening in the country at present. Now, we also have to remember that we are an island. We remember in the past, uh, especially stories like the Falkland Islands issue, where uh, in the past, especially in the 1980s, where Argentina, the biggest country that was located near these Falkland Islands, uh, Argentina decided to invade Falkland Islands. And Margaret Thatcher was the Prime Minister of Great Britain. Uh, Falkland Islands were obviously a colony. So, few days later, she decided to uh, retaliate and capture the colony once again. There, were, uh, there was a very intense battle between the two countries, Argentina and the Royal uh, Air Force and the Royal Navy. And after about 70 days, Britain recaptured their uh, territory, the Falkland Islands. These are incidents from the history that we remember, things that happened. We do not know whether similar things will happen to us, but from what we can see right now, our interests, Sri Lanka's interests have to be protected and from the looks of it, 
we the people will have to protect the interests of our country the people are watching over 500,000 square kilometers of ocean territory an exclusive economic zone that has attracted the attention of the entire world over eight times the size of our land mass the time has come for all Sri Lankans to stand up and defend what is ours we must call it what it is the sea of Sri Lanka do your online shopping now with sambole.lk to get it home delivered or pick up on your way sambole.lk Sama kaledi api ardu ate di ter ter api acara varial panti lamai sama mese wata raskela raskela lamangi ngana ogolo loku nam kran mukad kela mage wari aha mangke patra katru kere kena kela kaur tina wene patangga mukade eka e parisari eti wicce rakia wakne we Senior journalist and media personality Kala Kethi Dr. Edwin Aryadasa has passed away at the age of 98 today. Dr. Edwin Aryadasa passed away at his residence this morning, born on the 3rd of December 1922 in Unawatuna Gaul. Aryadasa is an alumnus of Mahinda College and the University of Ceylon. where he obtained a degree in singhala and english languages teaching was his first profession after which he entered the insurance field he found his true calling in journalism in 1949 later he was instrumental in establishing mass communication and media courses at local universities he is also a renowned writer on buddhism and current topics and he continued to contribute to newspapers and magazines he has authored several books in both singhala and english dr edwin aryadas's contributions to print and digital media will forever be etched in the history books of sri lanka dr aryadas was a resource person and a consultant of the sirsa media group since its inception and has been a pillar of strength to the organization in times of great difficulty his contribution when the tsunami wave hit sri lanka is also commendable we will not forget the contributions made by dr aryadasa to the 24 hour live broadcast during the dawn of the new century in the year 2000 may you attain the supreme bliss of nibbana The human elephant conflict that has gone unresolved for decades continues to plague the helpless farmers and villagers of our country. Today's report is on a wild elephant attack that claimed the life of a villager in Kiribati. The Kiribati area in Kurunagala has been constantly battered by the human elephant conflict for decades. Villagers complain that marauding elephants encroach on their areas at least twice or thrice a week. Farmers are forced to guard their crops at night, leaving their loved ones in fear. Susanta Kumara is a 32-year-old farmer in Giribava who fell victim to the latest casualty of a wild elephant attack. Farmers like Susanta who also earn a living through animal husbandry take their cattle to graze in the Madhavalagama reserve. They spend their nights in the forest with the intention of returning the next morning. But in a turn of events, Susanta decided to return home to spend time with his 4-year-old daughter, not knowing that it would be his final journey. His arduous journey back home was undertaken with the hope of taking care of his wife who is expecting their second child. But a wild elephant attack claimed the life of Susanta, who lived as a loving father and a husband until his last breath. Ayyo, magidaru, magidaru, amin de. 
The Fast Unto Death campaign demanding a solution to the human elephant conflict launched by farmers from Vasapugala Hambantota is still ongoing. Two farmers engaged in the Satyagraha were hospitalized today. Farmers from Valsapugala Hambantota decided to take to the streets last Monday, demanding the proposed wild elephant management reserve in Hambantota be included in the government gazette. Today marks the fifth day of the Satyagraha. Since the campaign began, three farmers had fallen ill while two others were hospitalized due to critical conditions. Meanwhile, seven more women joined the Satyagraha today. Seven of us have joined the Satyagraha on behalf of the women in our village. We are ready to fast until death if the authorities refuse to provide a solution to this problem. The innocent people of Hambantota elected five MPs with the highest number of preferential votes. Our harvests are completely destroyed overnight. Don't you see this? Considering the two-third majority held by the government in parliament, this proposal can definitely be included in the government gazette. Our request is to include the proposed wildlife elephant management reserve in the government gazette. However, that hasn't seemed to be done. Don't compel us to take this to the streets. If we do so, this issue will intensify. Meanwhile, a group of protesting farmers expressed their disappointment opposite the Surya Baba Divisional Secretariat today. The Colombo Stock Exchange's All Share Price Index recorded its largest gain in history today with 332.18 basis points, setting a new all time high, with the index closing at 8,463.43 points. Daily turnover at the Colombo Stock Exchange reached 12.8 billion rupees today. Expo Lanka topped the list for the most active trades today, followed by LOLC Holdings and Brown's Investments. Today's top gainers were Industrial Asphalt Ceylon, LOLC Holdings, Colombo City Holdings, Brown & Company, Hunters & Company, LOLC Development Finance, Carson Cumberbatch, Onali Holdings, Guest at North Ceylon and Bukit Dara PLC. The top losers were Blue Diamonds Jewelry Worldwide, Tess Agro, Beruwala Resorts, Alumex, E.B. Creasy and Company, Pegasus Hotels of Ceylon, Lake House Printers and Publishers, Haley's Fabric, Ceylon Bank and Macwoods Energy. With that, we wrap up primetime news. I'm Bernadine Jai Singha, and the interpreter for tonight is Taratha. Good night, take care.